and legend of Baba Yaga, who is a part of the Don't Knock Twice movie and uh, game. So we're going to talk about both tonight. And before we get into that, I'm going to give everybody some uh, folklore about Baba Yaga. She's known as the wise witch of Sla of Slavic folklore. She's also known as Baba Laga and is one of the most famous witches in Slavic in Slavic folklore. Um she is the most popular figure in children's fairy tales and was one of the most common stories of Russian tradition. Uh, she's um, also known as the Confounding Crone. Her name broken down, first Baba means old woman or grandmother, and Yaga means snake or wicked. Um, so Baba Yaga is commonly illustrated as riding in a mortar rather than on a broomstick wielding a pestle, both as a flying aid and a wand. Her hut is found deep in the woods, standing on magical chicken legs with a rooster head on top. The fence surrounding her home was generally made out of human or animal bones, mainly human rem human bone remains. Now, I'm going to stop you for a minute, babe. Um, I know we're, this is going to be an off-topic thing, but it does have a DLC involving Baba Yaga, which is the Tomb Raider. Um, what are Rise the... of the Tomb Raider. Yeah. Yeah, it's called, it was called The Legend of Baba Yaga. Okay, so how did that portray Baba Yaga? Like, like did you think from um, what you know and what we should know or whatever, or even the <laughs> listener that may not know too much about Baba Yaga, would you recommend... The Tomb Raider. Oh yeah, level? the Tomb the Tomb Raider the Tomb Raider game itself is very good, but the Baba Yaga DLC for Rise of the Tomb Raider was actually pretty well done. They actually did um, portray Baba Yaga pretty well. I thought um, they even had her they had her inside a, a cauldron. Or a mortar type thing, riding around on the inside of it, throwing, you know, throwing projectiles at you. And the outside of her mortar or her cauldron was was um, lined with human severed heads and body parts and stuff. Now, what about her house itself? Her house itself actually was depicted as it's depicted in folklore. It was a house that walked on chicken legs and... Um, moved around and now, she also has um i guess you could say uh for lack of a better word hellhounds that come out yeah or death hound or, or death whatever hounds, depending yeah. on how you how whoever want to call them um now do we know or do you know when the origins of baba yaga first started do you know that at all or Oh, when she was first mentioned? Yeah, like, you know how... How old she is? Yeah, how old Baba Yaga is. And from a scale of 1 to 10, how would you say how dangerous is Baba Yaga? Baba Yaga is a, is a very, um, a very um, powerful witch, a very deadly witch, especially to children um, or innocent or innocents. For another lack of a better word, she um, she's said to de to uh, devour children or innocent souls. That's what she feeds off of. Um, but as far as the tale of her, how far she goes back? Oh boy, um, there's a picture of her dating back to 1902. But I have a feeling she's much older than that. So 1902? There's illustrations of her dating back to 1902, but I think she's older than that. Which, if we can find some more information, we'll definitely do more. 
Yeah. Maybe we can just do a regular podcast just on her to talk about more of her. Yeah. But um, right now we're just talking about the film in the video game that I tried. I didn't get a chance yet to play it in VR, but we did watch a YouTuber play it in VR, which um, we'll get to that. But right now, where were you going to start, baby? With the film or the uh, game? Oh, well, I figured we'd start with the, the film first, probably, and then go into the game and talk about comparisons. Okay. Um, so Don't Knock Twice is, uh, it was released in September 29th of 2016. Um, it's about a mother who's looking to reconnect with her estranged daughter and attracts the attention, the attention of a demonic witch, also known as Baba Yaga, in this case. And the mother is played by Katie Sackoff. Um, her name in this movie is Jess, and she's portrayed as a British sculptor. But um, most of you might know her from Oculus as the mother, Marie. And Joyce as the sister in Haunting in Connecticut, too. She was kind of like the hippie sister. Well, I haven't gotten a chance to see Haunted in Connecticut 2 yet, but one of these days I will get around to it. Oh, it's good. <clears throat> I've seen it. It's good. Well, I'll have to watch it with you and show you. Um, and then you've got Lucy, Lucy Boynton, who plays as the daughter, Chloe. And then, um, I think I want to say Javier Potet. Or Bo Botet plays as Baba Yaga in this one, and his you also may know his work if you've seen Mama. He plays as obviously Mama in the horror horror flick Mama. He also plays as the Red Ghost in Crimson Peak. He plays the Crooked Man in The Conjuring Two. In the other side of the door, he plays the entity called Mithru. And, um, so yeah, so chances are you've probably seen him in one of these other things, so... And not realize it. And not realize it, but this guy is phenomenal. <clears throat> um, those were just a few to mention, but those were, like, probably my favorite roles of his. Because I think he just played the character so well. He portrayed them well. Um, and then, um, I have no idea how to pronounce her, her real name, so I'm just gonna call her by her actress name, Tira. She plays as Jess, one of Jess's, um, sculpture model subjects, and she has a daughter, a child, a baby. And, um, <clears throat> she, um, she knows stuff about, um, Baba Yaga. And she comes off all scared and timid and stuff. But we'll get to we'll get to what her real uh, master plan is. Um, Jordan Bol uh, Bolger is played uh, by Danny, who is Chloe's friend that goes with her. Um, Richard Mayan plays as Ben, Jess's husband in this film. Nick Moran plays as Detective Boardman. So, so we, we open in where, um, Jess, who's the mom, is trying to get back into or reconnect with her daughter, Chloe, and, um, hopefully become part of her life again after having a checkered past, and, um... Yeah, she, she used to, and, um... We don't really know for sure Party what... Party hard. Huh? Party hard. She well, was an addict. Right, but she used to get high a lot, whether if it would... Well, we know it's drug, but what I'm, what I'm trying to say is we don't really know if it would, like, pop in pills or what. But at the same time, um, when you play the game, you do see a lot of pill bottles lying around. So I don't know... Um, 
if that like her medicine or what, but I just I did notice when I played the game before watching the movie that um, there was a lot of pill bottles lying around. Mm-hmm. So, so she's trying to reconnect with her estranged daughter Chloe, and of course Chloe comes off hating her at first because she's like you abandoned me you know you walked out of my life how could you I hate you blah 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 and she try just tries to offer to her daughter Chloe for her to come and stay with her which she declines at the time she's like no way um no way in hell and so it goes forward flashes forward to Chloe and Danny hanging out outside of a building, you know, talking and stuff. And then Danny proceeds to tell Chloe about Mary Amanoff, also known as Ginger, who is said to be the Russian witch who took children. She's like the reason why kids are disappearing. She was the reason why kids were disappearing. And he was telling her this legend, if you knock on her door... Why she said to take you away or something's supposed to take you away you know so he takes he takes Chloe to this this house that's out in the middle of a field all by itself all alone nothing else surrounding it and it has this really peculiarly strange goat head knocker door hand door knocker on it this is like an old-fashioned door knocker oh yeah. yeah this this thing was pretty freaking cool looking not gonna lie it's not your average door knocker no so i want it yeah it is wicked cool so danny's like well here let me let me go up to the door let me prove to you that there's nothing to be worried about there's nothing to be scared of and then everything will be fine. So Danny goes up to the door, knocks. One, two. Walks back over to Chloe. And he goes, see? Nothing. I'm still here. And then Chloe proceeds to walk over to the door. Knock, knock. And then she's like, oh, okay. Nothing happened. So she goes up to the door. And yep, she. Knocks. Yep, she. She went up to the door and she knocked and. and Twice. She, yep, she goes back over to Danny, and then. Um, you kind of notice Danny now when she goes back. Like at this point in time, you notice that Danny is now all of a sudden gone. Gone. But now the focus is that window on the top right of the. Um, do I want to say burnt down house? The, the structure, the building. Just, yeah, like, like the top right, ha um, part of the place window, and what does she see? Ginger. Yep, she sees Ginger looking out the window at her. Um, then she turns around, she's looking for Danny, she can't find him anywhere, and she's like freaking out, she's like, Danny, where are you, Danny, where are you? And all of a sudden, Danny sneaks up behind her and scares the crap out of her. And then she besieged, she... Nothing like a good prank. Yeah. She, uh, in turn, tries to beat the crap out of him for scaring her, which I don't blame her. Anyways, so... It goes forward more, and Danny's in his place. And... <clears throat> Chloe's in her place. And, um... Danny hears knocks in sets of twos on the door. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. So Danny goes and checks the door. Doesn't see anything at first. No. All of the lights in the frickin' hallway go out. One at a time. Do, 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 do. All the way up to the door. And then... Well, all the way right, down the hallway, yeah, I think. Uh, first, right? Yeah. All the way down the hallway, away from the door. All the way up until one light, which is right in front of the door. And then you see an eyeball, and all you hear is, run, she's coming. Yep. 
So Danny backs away from the door, scared, like, what the hell is going on, and goes, proceeds to go into his, his bedroom and shut the door. And then Chloe goes to call him on the computer, like Skype. Skype call him, for lack of a better word, because I don't know what the hell they call it in this movie. And they're, they're, um, they start to try to talk, and then Chloe hears the same thing. Knock, 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 knock. Goes to get up to check what it is, leaves her monitor. In this point in time, you see a black figure with really long freaking arms reach out of this black, like, mist crap and grab Danny and hoist him up into the air to the point where he looks like he's levitating and you can hear like cracking noises and stuff and him like struggling and kind of screaming and stuff a little bit and then she yanks him out of the room before Chloe gets back to the monitor to see that Danny's gone yep. but not only does she notice Danny's gone, but she does happen to notice something, something in, in the, the doorway, doorway looking at her. Yep. Which she can't quite make out what it is. Yep. Alright, so you want to talk about what happens next? Uh, you might need to help me a little bit. Um, so after that, I think we kind of... Go back to the mother. Yeah, I think. you go back. You go back to the mother, Jess, and she's working in the studio, working on a statue with her model. With the baby, yeah. Her model with the baby, which is um, Tiara, and they're uh, sculpting away. I remember that. Yeah, they're sculpting away and chit chatting and talking, and then. Um, uh, Tira gives Jess a necklace. Yeah, that's what it was. And she goes... It's a gift. She goes, this is a gift, and, and, and this will help Chloe see the love inside your heart for her. And she puts it around her neck, and she's like, well, I gotta go, and blah, blah, blah. And she leaves. Tira leaves. Yeah, because she, I think had that appointment with the um do I want to say a foster home I don't really know what uh, I don't even think that they really say no she just we'll said just, she had to go somewhere we'll just say a foster place really like a place to, um are you getting people mixed up because Tira is the one with the baby Tira is the one no with but the I'm talking to mother well just I don't know I'm not entirely sure but anyways she, like, Tira leaves with the baby, and then it goes to, like, it goes to, like, um, Ben, who's Jess's husband in the movie, and Jess talking. And then, all of a sudden, you hear, um, a knock on the door. Right? Chloe. Okay, I think we jumped too far somewhere, because I think we forget, cause didn't she go to the foster care, foster home, whatever, to, um, to what do you call it, uh, pretty much, pretty, pretty much to go and find Chloe, Chloe for the first time. No, that was in the beginning. They were talking in the courtroom. Okay. So that was the courtroom? Yeah, they were talking in the courtroom. So then... The yeah, it could have been... Man, it's, it was so good, but, like, I guess it's hard to also remember, because, especially for me, since I've also played the game, and so... There's a lot of different type of things going on between the two, which the game will definitely have to get into, but it's yeah. different at the same time, almost as the same, 
yeah we'll get in we'll get into that we'll get into the comparisons and the similarities and stuff between the game and the movie yeah so it's just it's just one of those type of deal but it could be to the fact where we're to say we're to say right now that yes the knock is on the door and happened to be Chloe because of what happened from um, her experience with Danny getting dragged out of the damn room and all that shit. So, um, that's when I think they were, she, they were saying, like, oh, yeah, you can stay here for a couple of days or something like that. Right? Like a couple of days? I, I think so. That's where I was getting at, but... Um... So yeah, so yeah, from what what we believe happened next is that Chloe shows up at Jess and Ben's house, and she, so let's go back for a minute, and we're going to go back to where Danny was, after Danny was taken, and we talked about how Chloe saw something in the doorway. She didn't quite make out what it was. And then all of a sudden this thing jumps up on on screen and uh, on the on the computer and, and scares her. So it goes forward to the next day and Chloe is trying to reach Danny by calling him on the phone in which in which he is not answering. We all Which, yeah, which go ahead. um you forgot to mention that when she's looking through the uh, video call thing that the doorway had not like the doorway entry thing had turned into like a really dark like nature force thing when yeah. before the uh, jump scare has come out to play but that's all I'm just gonna add okay so anyways it's and the next day, Chloe is trying to reach Danny, and she, Danny's obviously not picking up the phone. We all know why, but Chloe doesn't. So, she, we're assuming that she's at school, or, uh, freaking, um, not school, uh, foster home. And she goes to talk to one of the, um, adults or counselors or whatever who's there. And she's in a room by herself with a sink in it. And the whole room goes red. And first it starts with the water turning on mysteriously and then turning into blood. Yep. And the sink fills up with blood. And then what happens, babe? Baba Yaga starts coming out to play from the sink with her long, um, bony-like fingers coming out of the sink. And that's pretty much about it, really, before it kind of goes back to normal. But before the sink even happens, she gets, like, a random text or message or something and it's actually a picture of her in that very moment like from behind from behind yeah so what do you think of that babe that little scene i was like oh boy somebody's got danny's phone and is screwing with her it's not good it's no bueno no so yeah i mean it gets pretty gnarly i guess will be the word yep because it's one of those automatic sinks, and she goes to walk over towards it to pick something up, and it goes on. And all of a sudden, you see this, like, blood-red... Kool-Aid-looking water, water running. ...coming out of it and filling up the entire sink, and the room starts to go red. Like, red lighting or whatever. Yeah. And the sink's still flowing. And then, all of a sudden, as Chloe's backing up away from the sink... Towards the door, you see these long hands, like Paul says, long, bony-like fingers coming out of this bloody sink. Yep. Coming out and reaching, reaching for Chloe. And Chloe's freaking out, trying to get out of the room. 
open the Pounded door. Pounded on the door and then... Um, open the door, help me, and then the the guy, the adult comes in that she was talking to before. That I can assume yeah, he's one of the counselors. I'm trying to figure out who, what this guy is because I think he was part of the foster thing. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And but, yeah, I mean, now it goes back to uh, Jess. Jess and Ben's house. Where I believe this is the part where Jess gets a weird ass nightmare of um, Ginger, I believe, or something like that, or it's close to it. And she um, hears him knocking on the door. Her and Ben go to investigate. Oh yeah, and it's Chloe at the door. Yep. 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 So Chloe is then asking them if they can. Um, she can stay the night, and they're just like, um. Well, uh, maybe for a few days, and so a few days kind of turned into, like, an everlasting two days, but yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit, but yeah, Chloe just doesn't feel safe, and she thinks she's going to be safe possibly at Jess's home, or her, Chloe's mother's home, where she tried to relight the flame of mother and daughter. Yeah, restrain to strengthen the bond or make it, you know, rekindle it. So she's trying to help get Chloe set up for the night, gathering blankets and stuff and talking to her as she does. Yep. And trying to get her all comfortable and set up for the night. Yeah, and I mean, you can... Gives her room. You can see, like, the mom is... Definitely, trying. like, trying her best, especially, like, the next morning or whenever time is supposed to be. But I'm assuming the next morning. Yeah, so she's on the phone. She's talking to Ben while Chloe's sitting outside in the garden. She's like, she hates me, she hates me. And Ben's like, just give her time, you know. You know, she'll eventually warm up to you and blah, blah, blah. And then, then it flashes forward to the evening and, and, uh... Chloe overhears Ben and Jess arguing in the kitchen about Ben going away for a business trip. And Chloe's like, well, I mean, Jess is like, well, can can you just not go? And she's like, well, I have to go. It's important and blah, blah, blah. So she's making, so Jess is making dinner while, after this argument has taken place. And she puts a bowl of, like, curry potato soup or something in front of Chloe. And Chloe's sitting there and she's playing with it with her spoon and... And then uh, Jess gives, you know, the dad his or whatever. And then all of a sudden, while Chloe's playing with her dinner, she sees a molar tooth with blood in her soup. Freaks out, knocks the bowl to the floor. Shattered the soup and everything. Shatters the bowl, soup goes everywhere, and she runs out of the room. Now, what the tooth supposed to signify here? You, would you know what the, this tease is? supposed to signify like a like a child tease or her tease like the what molar, I mean by her, yeah maybe. I, I think I think it's supposed to signify like remnants of a child or something like that it's something something definitely meant to mess with Chloe you know because you know take her out of feeling at ease yeah and so now the husband has left. Uh, has left, and it's the next night, of course, or the same day, night, whatever. No, it's the next. It's the it's the it's the night of the next day. Yep, and, and Jess, is, Jess, is, Jess in bed. is about to have a very interesting nightmare about Be- Mary um, Armanoff. Also known as Ginger in this movie. Which, as we've already talked about, Ginger, the tale here where if you go to her place and not twice, she's supposed to kidnap you or, and take you away and all this other stuff. So, what happened? So, would Mary, um... Yeah, one to wake her from, one knock to wake her from her bed, the second to summon her. And... I'm thinking between what we've seen with Baba Yaga showing up and Mary, 
I'm thinking that Mary was a was one of these servants of Baba Yaga. And the thing with the the folklore or whatever or legend of this movie is the you can only stop Yaga, Baba Yaga, one of three ways. You can kill yourself if you are the servant of Baba Yaga. If you bear her mark, you can kill yourself. Or you can pass the curse on to someone else by making them doing something truly evil. Or you could, um, or Baba Yaga gets who she sets out to get. Yep. So let's, that's one of three ways that this whole, like, thing can end, is the one of three ways. So obviously, in the dream that um, Jess just had about Mary Armanoff, a.k.a. Ginger, Ginger took her own life, slit her throat with a knife. She was obviously... Yeah, because I know we're going to skip ahead, but isn't there something from Old Drawing about the servant opens up the door, like, or something? Like, I'm trying to remember how... Yeah, they summon her. Yeah, so they so they knock twice, like Tessa was saying, want, knock once to wake her, knock twice to summon her. And then I think technically the third thing is opening the door, like, if you're the servant, which I think that pretty much welcomed... Baba Yaga into the, the world. I want to say. I I think that's the I'm, technical I'm, way. I'm also I'm also thinking because um, what one of the things that I noticed about the game, which we're going to talk more about, but I'm actually thinking that the other way of summoning Baba Yaga is in that game that you played. Yeah. Which we'll talk about, but I believe there's more than one way. To summon Baba Yaga, either by knocking and calling for her, or doing a ritual to call for her. But um, this is this is like this is like one witch you don't want to summon unless you absolutely know what you're up against. Well, better question is why why would you even want to summon her to begin with? Yeah. Exactly. Like, just leave her alone, and you'll be good. Just let her be in her dark forest. Just let her be. Eating children all day long. Um, yeah. It'll be fine. So, she, so Jess wakes up for her, from this dream, and Chloe is there when she wakes, standing, and she's like, I heard you having a dream. And she asked her what it was, and she proceeded to tell her it was about Mary slitting her throat. And then she wakes up from it, and um, so Chloe said, like, was talking to her, and she said that she was scared, and she wants to feel safe, and blah, 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 and um, just says, well, you're safe here. I won't let anything happen to you. So she ends up falling asleep in the bed with her mother, and they wake up next morning, laying side by side, and they hear a knock at the door. They go downstairs together to examine what it is, because the knock is in the sound of twos. One, two. One, two. Which Chloe's freaked out, because she's thinking it's Baba Yaga coming after her. So she stays behind while Jess goes to answer the door. Jess opens the door to find Tira. And her infant daughter outside waiting. But she didn't realize she, like, forgot about it. Like, she thought it was supposed to be, like, a different day or something. Yeah, we're supposed to have, we're supposed to do more sculpting today. Did you forget? So they go out to the studio to do some work. And they start to get ready. And, um... Get everything set up to work, and that's when Chloe, she noticed. Chloe comes out into the studio to bring her mother coffee, and Tara looks at her, and automatically you can tell by the look on Tara's face that she can see 
and sense something very wrong about the energy around Chloe. She just knows. And she she gets her baby, puts her in the seat, and she goes, I have to go. You know, not much of a warning, just as I have to leave right now. And she goes and puts her baby in the car, and she's scrambling to get her in the car. And Jess and Chloe go out after her, like, where are you going? You just got here. You know, there's what's wrong? And she's like... And then Tira turns around and says to Jess, you can't, you can't help her. You can't save her. There's a dark, there's a dark energy, a dark presence around her. She's Plus, marked. she's marked and she belongs to someone she else. She belongs to someone else. Yep. And she's like, well, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Where are you going? And she leaves with the baby. Tira leaves with her baby. Which, um, I wouldn't blame her. Wouldn't want a kid to be around dark energy either. No, no. I I would definitely keep my child away from any dark negative entity or energy or presence. That's for damn sure. So, so it goes forward ahead and Chloe and Jess are back inside the house. And Jess hears something. She goes to investigate, and... Notices that Chloe is now talking to... To Detective Boardman. Which we learn that they've known each other for a long time since, since Chloe, Chloe was, was little. little. Yeah. And... What, 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 what did you think of the detective the first time you met him, meet him? I wasn't quite sure what to think of Detective Detective Boardman at first. I was kind of a little... Off I, about him? I guess a little weirded out by his presence a little bit. Like, I wasn't sure what to make of him. I didn't know if he was going to be one of those bad cops or whatever. And... He was just like, he um, proceeds to talk to Jess and say, well, I've known Chloe a long time, like Paul said, like, since she was little. You know, we go way back, we know a lot, and I just came to follow up about Danny. He's been missing, you know, we we just wanted to see if Chloe had heard from him or knows anything or blah, blah, blah. Which you can clearly see that Chloe is upset about her friend Danny missing. And... And he's like, well, if you need me, you know, keep in touch. If you need to talk, we'll, you know, we'll feel figure free out to call something. me. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about it. Because he's been investigating this um, ginger theory thing for a while. And he's been looking at uh, Thruy, or Throckery. Thoroughly, yeah. Yeah, and... Also with Danny and Chloe at one point goes, I thought you believed me, meaning I think the whole Ginger story about knocking on her house and the rumor is, like we said, like you get taken if you knock on Ginger's house or a.k.a. Mary, uh... Amara... Amarnov. Amarnov, yeah. A.K.A. the servant of Baba Yaga. Pretty much. Um. So, he leaves, and then it, it goes forward some more, and you see Chloe doing research about an entity called Baba Yaga. You know, she's researching all the folklore, legends, everything there is to know about her. Yep. And she hears something... Coming from the window. She goes towards it, goes to look. And then in which case, Jess, come in, Jess comes in and disrupts her before she gets to pull back the curtains to look. And her, her and Jess start talking about all the stuff that she's printed up and all the pictures and stuff that she has of Baba Yaga. Which... I think, well, this is this is going a little bit ahead, but yeah, that explains that 
she explains about how Baba Yaga can come into this world and what Baba Yaga is sent here to do and what she does when she crosses the threshold and comes into this world. And um, that she has to be summoned through a doorway. By, like, killing yourself and um, either killing yourself or you're a servant. That's how you end. That's how you. End that's how curse. you end it. But she talks about the mark that's bared by the servant, Baba Yaga's crest or mark or whatever, and explains what has to be done to end the curse or whatever. And yeah. in which case, Jess is like, "Enough! This is just fairy tale. It's not real." You need to you get know, a hold of yourself. You need to get a hold of yourself. There's nothing to be scared of. There's nothing to be, you know, to worry about. And in which case, Chloe's attention is turned away from her mother, and she looks in the mirror and she sees the reflection of Baba Yaga in the mirror, staring at the mother, staring, of Jess. staring at Jess. Which Jess then looks over at the mirror and only sees herself. While meanwhile, Detective Boardman is outside the house, you know, to, kind of doing like a scoop. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, shit. <laughs> Anyways, he's sitting outside the house, pretty much doing a stakeout. There's my word. And in which case, we go forward to the next day, and. Uh, Chloe is in the studio with Jess and working on, like, a metal figure, which I'm only assuming she's trying to mold into something that's supposed to depict what Baba Yaga looks like. And Jess, you know, starts, um, watching her try to, you know, work with the statue, and she's working on her own statue. Which is made out of clay. Which is made out of clay while Chloe is working with something that's more like metal and opposable. And she sees Chloe getting frustrated with it and Chloe like throws it or whatever. And then she's like, well, come here. I want to show you something. And she calls Chloe over and she takes out a bunch of clay. Hands yep. it to her, tells her to warm it up between her hands. And... You know, she's trying to occupy her and get her more... Involved. Involved. This is where the whole, like, mother-daughter bond Bonding. comes into play. Yeah. Because I think this is during the part where Chloe starts talking about that teddy bear that she once had and, um... Teddy bear uh, painted on the wall and talking about the... The scary figure that... Yes, supposedly painted behind the door that yeah, frightened the, yeah, Chloe. The, yeah, the scary bear. She's talking yeah. about a turtle or a frog or something that she loved that her mother painted. And then there was a scary bear. And she and then Jess was like, I don't remember painting that. And then Chloe turns around and says, well, Chloe, you were probably, high. Yeah, probably because you were high. Which, once again, like, high of what, though? Like, pills? Like, unless we're that supposed to be medicine, which we'll get yeah, to. Yeah, it doesn't really, it doesn't really talk about what but, she, Either way, though, Jess doesn't even like talking about it. Yeah. Because, um, she, she doesn't really like to have it be referred to as being high. She just calls it her being sick. She was sick. Back in the day. Now she, she bettered herself. Yeah, she's doing a lot better. She's she's clean. She's sober. You know, she's a she's a big time sculptor. She does like all of her pieces are running for like a big amount of money. And it's all done in clay. And it's all done made out of clay, from what I can see. So yes, you got to think like that's. Some dedication to keep your mind busy from all the time that you or she was high, or in this case, sick. Mm -hmm. But once that little conversation is over with, um, Jess goes to get a drink, and I believe it's this time around where the statues moved. Yeah, all the statues move, and they're all facing and looking at Chloe. Which, just now, is like, like, don't touch 
the statue. Like, like what did you do? Do you, don't touch my work or don't touch my statues. Don't she's move like, them. And she's like, she's like, I didn't. And she's like, I thought I was safe here. And then well, she runs off. So now Jess is, um, I don't know. I'm, I don't. I, I want to say annoyed. Loss, Jess is annoyed and also at a loss for words because she doesn't know what to say to Chloe to put her at ease at this point because Chloe just seems so distraught. In which case, we go forward some more, and Chloe is bringing in her things from a moving truck. I'm assuming that came from a foster home. She's moving in with her mother, and she's bringing some of her things into her mother's studio. She brings the box in, she leaves, she goes back out to the moving truck to grab more. And then she go, um, they, they go, Jess and the foster woman go to the studio, and Jess is like, well, the studio's this way, let me show it to you, and, and blah, blah, blah. This probably had to be, like, the most heartbreaking thing for Jess, because... She walks in, and she sees her entire studio just about destroyed in shambles all her work on the floor everything just a mess and jess is now kind of blaming this incident on chloe because because chloe was in the last 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 person but now you see red paint on the floor that says she's mine dun 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 so, um, Jess proceeds to flip out and blame Chloe and say, you know, you know, did you, why did you do this? You know, this is my work. How dare you? Blah, blah, blah. And Chloe storms out upset, like not knowing what the hell she's being blamed for. No, because when she last entered it, everything it was, was perfectly fine. fine. But now she's like. And then the foster lady's like, well, if you find that you can't cope and you can't handle her, call me and Chloe will come back to us. And then during the night, um, Jess is on the phone with that lady. and But she's not saying anything. No, but... She's sobbing. No, but the other lady knows her... She's frustration. Like, I don't, yeah, she's like, I don't know who you are, but I can tell that you're upset and you're frustrated. I can hear you crying. So then, what does she do next? She takes the card. Looks at it for one second and then rips it up while she's looking at Chloe. Outside. Yeah. Because deep down inside, she, she really can't, doesn't want to give her up. She can't give her, do- her own daughter up again. So she goes upstairs to check on Chloe to see what Chloe's doing. In this case, Chloe is checking a bag, preparing to be kicked out or prepared to be abandoned again. Yeah, as Chloe tells her mother, be abandoned or dragged off again. And then that's when Jess is pretty much like, no. No, I'm not going to do that. No, so she's talking, trying to calm Chloe down. And she's like, you know the scariest thing about having a baby? It's not the crying or the feeding or... The sleepless nights. Or the sleepless nights. It's the love. I wasn't prepared for the love. How much love I would feel when I first looked at you. I was so overwhelmed and consumed with it. I loved you since the moment you were born. You know, and... Pretty much it goes on, like, I loved you when when I dropped you off at the uh, foster home. I loved you... Um, I loved you when I was high. I loved, I loved you, you when I dropped you, you off yeah. at, the, at the home when I abandoned you. I yeah. love you now. I love you now, yep. Like, pretty much... Things that a mother should say, like a mother. I was only trying to do what was best for you, and I wasn't good. I wasn't good she wouldn't for you fit to be enough. around. Yeah, she wouldn't fit enough. I was too messed up for you to be around back then, and I was only trying to do right by you. And as she's saying that, she. If you can see something clicking in Chloe's brain, like, oh my God, she really isn't a terrible person. She really does love me. And just is like unpacking everything that Chloe has started packing too. Like 
saying, like, you ain't going anywhere. And, like, Tessa's saying, um, Chloe is finally understanding, like... Why her mother did what she did. She was only trying to do what was best for her to protect her from her. Because and she that, wasn't fit And that's like understandable. Paul, yeah. I mean, I would... If I was not well, and if I was getting high all the time like this mother was... Yeah, I would probably give up my kid, too, just because I knew that the kid wasn't I, safe around yeah, me. It, it, yeah, like Paul says, if if it were him or if it were I, if either one of us were not fit and we were wrestling with our own demons and we had to get help, we would do what was right for our kid and get ourselves better before, you know... We drive our child through any more mess. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So, this is, I'm uh, assuming, later on in the night where Jess is now trying to drink some coffee for some weird reason. You're just going to want to drink coffee in the middle of the night. But, guilty, I do it. I, I, but, I can sweep her, on the other hand. I don't really know why she's doing it. But, anyway, she, like, gets distracted because of what... Uh, excuse me, a light comes on, and she walks out to the living room where her daughter, uh, Chloe, is resting on the couch, and she notices this, like, uh, what do I want to call it, like a red tarp? Scarf. Scarf? A red scarf, okay. like a prop. Yeah, which is, like, caught, off of a statue in caught the on a deer statue or some type of animal statue, and in which case... This is not good. This is... What, what is one thing Baba Yaga is um, good at? Baba Yaga is good at deception. She is good at distracting you. If she wants you away from a certain area, she knows how to draw you out. So, Baba Yaga is good with deception. And what she has done is she has made... Just curious about why the hell this this red scarf has materialized and landed on a, on a statue in the garden. Which pulls her out of the house away from Chloe. Leaving Chloe, Chloe vulnerable and alone in the house. In which case the lights all go out in the house. It all goes black. Chloe wakes up. To investigate. And boom! In which case, she's calling out for her mother. And Jess isn't answering her because Jess is outside. Jess is still outside at this point, which Paul and I can't quite figure out why. She's still standing out there, looking around when the lights have clearly gone off inside the house. I'm sorry, but if this were my, uh, mine or Paul's kid or whatever... We would both already be running for this damn house. Or at least one of us would still be inside the house with our kid. Oh, while the other one goes and outside. And I like the fact that Jess, like, brought out a, like, a kitchen knife, Yeah, too. she brings out, like, a butcher kitchen knife, yeah. Yeah. And she goes back after she supposedly locked up the house tight to go and Well, we do see her lock it up. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm saying in this case. Oh, right. Yeah, and she goes back and the door is wide open. Open. Which and she doesn't Jess really like, locked. yeah. And, and now the door is like forcing its way shut. Trying to close on Jess so she can't get inside and slams her hand in the door. Ouch. Yep, that's going to leave a pretty little mark. Yeah, broken fingers. But at this point in time now, Chloe is definitely in danger she... with being alone because now the... um. A Baba Yaga's servant is now, like, wandering in the house, like, I think warning her or something, yeah, too. Yeah, run. Yeah. She's coming. Run, she's coming. Hide. And at this point in time, like, I don't really know if Chloe can even hear her yet. I think she does, but she doesn't know what to make of her. And, but we do see a glimpse of Chloe actually seeing the serpent later on, after the, um, this, uh, what do I want to call it, this, this 
horror-ish type style scare thing. We'll just say pretty much like the weeding up to the scare, the jump scare thing. Yeah. yeah. But fast forward ahead a little bit, and now you see Chloe is now in danger because Baba Yaga she, has finally she, come out to play. Yep, she's barricaded the door with the dresser from the inside. In which case, Baba Yaga comes out of a wardrobe within Chloe's bedroom, knocks the lamp over and everything else, the lights are flickering, and she's crawling across the floor, reaching for Chloe. In which case, just comes up, pushing the door open to get Chloe out. And now just is pretty much now, once again, going back to Chloe, saying, there's nobody in here. Yeah, but here's what I find funny. Chloe barricades the door from the inside using a dresser-like stand thing that was behind the door. When her mother forces the door open, the whole room is back in one piece like nothing freaking happened. Nothing. It's all back to normal. Like, there's no... Watch the magic tricks. Yeah, there's nothing knocked over. Everything is in its freaking place. And poor Chloe looks like she's losing her damn mind and just doesn't know how else to see it. Yeah. So she tries consoling her and everything she's else. like, I got an idea. You know, do you trust me? And they go through the house and they start taking off every fucking door in this house. Even the front fucking door. And... Douses it with gasoline and burns every fucking door in this house. And sits, and then stands outside the house and watches the whole... It's like, a door bonfire. Yeah, the door bonfire. And then it flashes, it goes forward to the next day, and they're talking about passports and travel, and we're going to go find somebody to help you, and blah, 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 blah. And they go to proceed to try to leave the house. Which, out of nowhere, the front door... Baba Yaga's door. ...appears and opens up to create a gust of wind. With a forest scene on the other side of the door. Which just walks over and she finally sees... At first hand, that everything that Chloe has been saying is the truth. And it's it's really interesting to just see Jess's reaction where she she doesn't really know what to do because I think it's because you know she'd never seen anything until up to this point, and yeah. what I mean by that is like she's she's seen no physical proof of what Chloe has been talking about, even with now. what we were just saying like. With the night before this next morning, like, Baba Yaga was coming for Chloe inside the her room. Which was trashed as Baba Yaga was making her way through it. But when Jess got into the room, it was, it was all, all taken care of, back to the meat. way it was. No sign of, like, any type of... Struggle. Struggle, yeah. It's just pretty much like a nice, clean room again. But at this point in time, they... They, uh, they end up going to the park, which... To talk to Tira. Yeah, um, and then this is the part now where I want to say, um, we haven't really done this before, Tessa, babe. Mm -hmm. Do you want to keep talking about this, or should we just stop here so that way we don't ruin it for those that have not seen it? Yeah, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna kind of hold off here. Um, we don't want to give too much more away, but we want to give you guys enough to where you guys want to go out and watch it. The last, I think, thing... That we want to mention about the movie... Would probably be a little bit of Detective Boardman. Just a little bit to kind of give you, like... Okay. So, there, um, there was evidence found... In Jess's house, a box, if you will, 
that had all the case stuff in the flash drive that was Detective Boardman's. And it was related to the case about Mary Ar Armanov, a.k.a. Ginger. And it AKA showed... A.k.a. Baba Yaga's servant. Yeah. And you see on the flash drive that Detective Boardman is interrogating Mary, you know, saying, you you did this, this is your fault, tell me where they are. Meaning you know, the kids. Talking about the kids that have been taken already. Especially one Michael. kid. Michael Flowers. Yeah, Michael Flowers. And so you see on this flash drive, Detective Borden, Boardman being very aggressive. Very in your face, you know, very relentless to Mary. You, you, he almost comes off as evil, like a bad cop. Yep. And that's what Jess sees, and that's what she starts to think. Well, maybe this guy, you it's know, not who we think he really is. Yeah, maybe this guy isn't really who we think he is, and that's pretty much. It but we're so, probably but here's here's the thing. Tira said something to Jess in the park. The kids were probably taken by someone they knew. Someone they could trust. Someone yeah, someone they knew, someone they could trust. So she was trying to point the attention away from Mary to say that Mary wasn't the one that did it. That it was someone else. Somebody else got blamed. For Mary got the blamed real for someone else's crime. Yeah, she was trying to make Mary appear to be innocent. I think that would be a good way to stop right there. Yeah. So dun dun dun. So go out and watch the movie. In that case, and you can and you rent can find it, out buy the rest it now. of yeah, and you can find out the rest of the story of what happens to Jess and Chloe. And how Tira and Detective Boardman play into this whole story. Which is quite honestly like, wow. Yeah, all we can say is holy plot twist. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a good twist in it. Yeah. Nice little twist. Yeah, it was good. Paul and I didn't see that coming, but it was pretty interesting. If I had to rate it, it would be 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, I would have to agree. I One thing I'm going to mention... So we kind of heard some music from Don't Knock Twice at the very beginning of this episode. Unfortunately, you cannot purchase the soundtrack anywhere. You can't find it on iTunes, YouTube, nowhere. You can't like, find it nowhere. Nowhere. Like, there's not a portable soundtrack to this movie, which is really, really weird because I loved the soundtrack to Don't Knock Twice. Like, hearing it as its own thing without, like, the movie itself, I think would have been a lot more great to he listen to. Just because of the atmosphere alone. It's very haunting. It's very... Eerie. Eerie. Like, it just... It just... Halloween-y feel. Like, it's just awesome. And we know how much uh, how you love your Halloween music. Well, not just that, but we are talking about our Halloween season. So. Yes, we are. Um, so, how we came to acquire the beginning theme of our podcast is that Paul actually recorded the music that played at the beginning menu of our DVD of Don't Knock Twice. So, that's how we got our opening music what for this episode. Say? What were you going to say, baby? <laughs> you you were going to say something else before you said, don't knock twice. I don't know. I don't know what you were almost said, but you corrected yourself at the very last second. Yeah, that anyways, was funny. I think I need more coffee. Um, uh, yeah. Pumpkin spice. Nom, 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 nom. Anyway, so yeah. Now so now we're, we're going to switch gears, and we're going to talk about the don't knock twice game. So, yep. babe. You played this game. What did you think of it? And why don't you tell us about it? All right. And I will so fill in the blanks. I played the game before even watching the film. So I had no idea what the film was like at all. So I just dove right into the game. Um, the game is very interesting. Uh, 
Which, by the way, I'm just going to make one thing clear. Uh, Don't Knock Twice is available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, but you can play it as VR, virtual reality, or you can do it as a regular game without VR. So you can play it both ways. In my case, I only played it non-VR um, I just didn't really feel like setting it up. Um, plus, I think I've had my share of VRs for a while for some horror game, which eventually I will discuss, because I would love to do an episode about all the VR horror games i played so far and rate them from my least favorite to best one for horror games. Um, the movement was pretty interesting. Uh, You had to walk around in the game using a candle that you light from the fireplace. The one thing, though, is if you are an achievement or a trophy hunter, when you're first playing that game, you probably will realize that that candle is very sensitive when it comes to the candles on the wall. So... The reason why I'm saying this is because there is a trophy where you cannot light a single wall candle. So pretty much what you would have to do is light the candle to start the game even. Because you have to light the candle to even leave the room. But once you do that, you need to switch to your phone with Chloe, right? Mm Chloe is the one that's texting you like all this non-stop text like i hate you why did you turn the power off why did you abandon me why did you abandon me um is there somebody else here and all this stuff while wow, you're playing a jet the mother which um it's very the game itself without giving too much away like it was actually pretty interesting because between the game and the movie the characters' names were the same. The house was the same. Pretty well, much. I... Almost I, similar. Well, similar. Well, there were certain rooms that were, like, spot on. Well, like we don't really know if it's even the, the... Well, it has to be the right house because of the, like, the workshop room. Mm-hmm. Like, that seemed to be the same. And, like, where all the sculptures were. Because that definitely seemed to be the same in the, uh... The house, but when you watch the movie, though, and then the game, I'm starting to wonder if the studio in the film is a separate Yeah, it's, building. A, separate, it's a separate building. It's not in the basement, whereas in the game... It's the, connected it, to the house. It's connected to the house, and it's in a basement level, almost. Yeah. Um, another thing, really, is, like, this time, which I know you want... I'm, I'm gonna have you talk about it, because I know you're gonna want to say something about it. Because uh, otherwise, we're gonna talk about it in Paranormal, which we'll probably do it there, too. Yeah, but. we will talk about it there, too, but um, what Paul is getting at is in the game, when you go into the room that looks like the sculpture room in the movie, you see a ritual layout. Um... With a with a pentacle in the center of the room with the table altar set up and sigils drawn out. It looks like a ritual for summoning. So, in this game, what I am gathering and assuming, because what I also was watching and observing while Paul was playing, was there were, um, there was a tablet with, like, a summoning for Baba Yaga. On a pool table upstairs in the house. Yep. And then it matched the diagram of what was in the the sculpture room in the basement. Yes. So it was so in the game, Baba Yaga was summoned. Well, see now this is where I'm starting to wonder. I'm wondering if this game is. Also, I'm not the a continuation big... of the film? I'm thinking maybe yes. Be- just because of the fact now that we're playing with a ritual thing, um, 
I don't want to go, I'm not going to spoil the ending, because I would definitely recommend it. Well, technically, there's multiple endings, so technically, I won't ruin it one way, but I don't even want to do that, because I'd rather you guys go out, support it, and tell us, or whatever, what you what your thoughts are. But what I'm trying to get at is, I think with this ritual thing... I don't know why games are doing this, but kind of like Paranormal Activity. I, well, I can kind of understand Paranormal a little bit, but in this case, not really. Like, what is it with Pentacles now where you It's need, being misused. It's, you see, yeah, that's what I wanted you to talk about. But before you do, babe, about okay. being the whole misused thing, what is it, though, with Pentacles now where... In order to undo the deal, we'll just say, for lack of a better term, like undo the curse, it's involving pentacles now. And what makes it really interesting is that because the pentacle has five points, now in the game you have to look for five specific items. And the way the items are found are by riddles in, throughout the house behind, like, uh, pictures. And what that's one thing I definitely liked about the game is that it used all five elements of the pentacle. At least they got that right. Yeah, they got that right, but... But yes, my, babe, please uh, <laughs> give us your frustration of the misuse of the pentacle. Giving my frustration of the use of the pentacle because I myself am referred to as a witch. Um... For the kind of ritual and spell work that they're, they're doing in games or movies or anything, like, in reference to, like, Don't Knock Twice, Paranormal Activity, you know, or, you know... Blair Witch, I think. Blair Witch not. or anything like that. They are misusing the symbol that is supposed to stand for the five elements and being a nature symbol, and they're turning it in and making it, molding it into something evil, and um, not what it actually is. And I get so frustrated with seeing that, because that makes, you know... That makes, like... That makes people afraid of us because of what they see in movies, what they see in games. If they see, like, a pentacle around our necks, they automatically assume, oh my god, she's evil. Oh my she's god, the she's a devil worshiper. You know? And I, I dealt with crap like that for, like, ten years. But anyways. Um, I get so frustrated with the misuse of, of the pentacle symbol. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do, you know, summoning rituals or whatever in this game, at least do your damn research and don't butcher my religious symbol. Please. You give people like us a really bad name and people are already kind of weary of us to begin with because we're not the norm, and we're not like everybody else, and we're not like, you know, sheep falling into line. But anyways, yeah, that's my little rant on that. Um, if you're gonna, you know, do dark stuff in a game, use... Use it properly. Use it properly. Don't... Because we are watching. Yeah, don't, you know, muddy up in soil. Don't mock the symbol of something else. Like, kind of like, um, this is going to be off topic a little bit, but once again, it's almost like, um, the Nazi symbol. Yeah, the, squ the swastika. The swastika. That's that, also, that was also considered to be something good before it got turned it's a, into it's shit. A symbolize, it's a symbol to symbolize peace, is what it was. And then now, when every time you see the swastika, uh, it's just Nazi. 
Oh, you're Nazi. But that's pretty much what it has come to. And now Tessa is pulling out her book. So get ready, folks. Let's sit down, relax, have a beer, and yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, while she's looking for what she's looking for, um, so the game. So, yeah, so you gotta find five specific items to summon Baba Yaga door. Which is represented by earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. Yes. Which, like I said, those were fun games, too, which you had to find around from, um, pictures inside, uh, the house. Which... It's pretty good. I mean, one of the, a couple of the, uh, yeah, a couple of the riddles actually got me pretty good because one of them I didn't really quite pay attention. So instead of going through um, a door, I'm just gonna say, I ended up going upstairs, which actually led me to, a, I guess, another riddle, which I didn't actually realize was a riddle until like. I really went back and looked around, and then I was like, huh, I wonder what this is. picture doing over here by the sink. And it turned out it was actually the, uh, that would have been the air, if I remember right, in the bathroom. I think it was the air. Or water, one of the, no, no water, water was, was the in, glass. Water was the chalice in the basement, air was the thing that was in the safe. Right. And, um, spirit was the necklace thing in the attic that you had to burn away cobwebs and there was yep. a spider that materialized. Yep. Fire was the doll that was in the oven. Yep. Earth was the, um... Yeah, earth was the crown in the, the wall. The crown in the wall. And then, what the hell was in the, uh, bathroom? Oh, that never mind. The, uh, that was the, the lock number for the, uh, yeah, never yeah. mind. Never mind. That was still cool, though. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Yeah, you know, did you find what you were looking for? No, you can keep talking. I'm still looking. Well, that's the thing. I don't, since I don't want to so, say too much. Um, why don't you talk about... Oh, well, I can talk about this while you're still looking. Yeah. Um, so, I did mention that you can play it in VR. So, if you don't play it in VR, you have full motion control of controlling your character no problem I love with VR now I which I don't really like I understand this but at the same time I don't understand it for something like don't knock twice but with don't knock twice with VR um I don't know if they ever changed it yet because I haven't gotten a chance to actually see it yet, but if it's still the same as what I've seen, then people who are not fans of teleportation when it comes to VR, then you probably will want to skip Don't Knock Twice in VR. Unfortunately, I would like to do it in VR just so I can see the difference. Like, I would love to just at least see the environment around me. This creation of the game, especially with a couple, um, jump scares, which I'm not gonna throw out, but I'll just say jump scares. Alright, babe, all you. So, we're going back to the use of the pentacle symbol and how it's being misused in games, movies, whatever. So, a pentacle... A there's, sometimes there's a confusion between the pentacle and the pentagram. For the record, the pentagram is a five-pointed star symbol, whereas the pentacle is more of a generic term for a mystical or magical symbol. Um, pentacle originates from the Latin root pend, to hang, hence pendant, and a pentacle is often designed to hang around your neck. It can be made of any material. And it um doesn't it like um it's kind of like well people people it's kind of like a seal it's kind of like a seal of solomon it's something like 
I wear my pentacle. The reason why I wear my pentacle is for protection. Like, and not to just say, oh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a witch or a Wiccan or a pagan or whatever. I wear it like, like a Christian wears a cross. It's it your protection. You. It's your protection. It protects you. It's your shield, you know. That's, that's why I wear mine. And I, I've been wearing mine, like, every day for a while now. I stopped wearing it for a while, but anyways, um, I don't want to get off too, too, too much off base, but the kind of, the kind of summoning that is being used for demons and such in these games and in these movies should be having the proper use of the proper symbol, or at least, I know they're not trying to really summon this stuff, but at least don't bash and sully and tarnish another person's religious symbol just because you want something scary out of the scary deal. out of the deal because you give people like us a bad rep by misusing our symbol that's all i, I really want to rant about on that but i mean if you're gonna you know if you want it to come off as scary or whatever if you want it to come off as scary or whatever, find some other kind of symbol to use. Or paint some freaking scary monster image or something in, in fake blood or whatever on your floor or whatever in your Or at least, games. if you're going to do the pentagram, at least do the go ahead inside the star. Because at least then... Dark magic or whatever. Dark. Yeah, magic, because whatever. at least then... Because normally when you see a pentagram, you see the go-head. And usually that helps symbolize that it's Satanism. Um, which is completely its own different thing, too. Which I don't even want to get into. Because, yeah. It's just, it's not really worth it. Like, it's worth to talk about, but it's not at this point in time. Because we'll go so, we'll, we'll go, we'll go so off-base away from the story if we just start yammering on about satanism and wiccans and pagans and witches and everything and in general warlocks, and whatever. warlocks and whatever in general because we'll, paul and i we could talk about that shit for for hours for days you know yeah no questions asked but yeah um but i think this right here kind of gives a good here here here's a fun here's a fun fact for some of you that don't aren't necessarily as observant to this but have you ever taken an apple and cut it in half like not not down the middle like not like um what is it horizontal horizontal but like slice it across vertical yeah from with the stem like between the middle not stem down between the middle. So vertical. Yeah. And if you open it up, you will notice that there is a pattern within the seeds to reveal a perfect five-pointed star or a pentagram inside an apple. So, so what? Now, are you going to say that apples are now the work of the devil? No, no, no. That's no, I'm just saying, all. I'm saying for other people... It's a hidden, it's a repercussion of a, of, of a hidden magical symbol that is hidden within a piece of fruit. And it just goes to show you there's magic in even the smallest of things, like, say, a piece of fruit. Um, and it, you know, it talks about how... Well, let's put it this way. It, it definitely takes, um... What's the word I'm looking for? Well, phrase I should look for. Like, it, it definitely takes a fresh set of eyes to actually see things that what are normally lies beyond unseen. The normal, the norm, the normality, I guess, of everyday life where you wouldn't have seen unless you were really looking for it. I guess is what I'm trying to say. 
Yeah, so we didn't necessarily, we don't necessarily want to get off kilter with the subject, but I just, Paul, Paul could see, like, when I was watching him play the other well, day. Well, when you and just that, you, like, you, we, we looked at the screenshots of Paranormal. What was the first thing you did, said? Oh, they're misusing the symbol again. Yep. And using, so using I kind of chuckled. So I kind of chuckled, and I'm just like, oh boy, well, you better talk about it then at some point. And then, yes, and then Tessa saw me play Don't Knock Twice and notice once again the symbol thing. being misused. So I was just like, okay, well, when we do this episode, we're going to have to have you talk about it just a little bit. Mm hmm. But yeah, that is very interesting. So about the apple, where if you cut it vertical, not from the stem down, that you can actually see the pattern. Um, I wish it kind of said more though of like where where you're supposed to cut the apple vertical. Like it's just like half of the yeah, apple. Yeah, it says it says if an apple is cut in half across its equator, then the pattern of the seeds is revealed. There you go. A perfect five pointed star or pentagram. The repercussions of this hidden magical symbol are far reaching. Five comprised of the feminine number two and the max masculine number of three is the number of harmony of the union of opposites. For example, in sexual congress or of a marriage, it is also the number of humankind because of the five points and extremity of the human body. The head, the arms, and the legs. And feet. Yeah, that's right. Five points. Yep. Now, um, I think that pretty much what it. What we want to cover on that, um... So, um, I, I'm trying to think if there's something else in the game that we haven't... Oh, yeah, what were the comparisons you wanted to do between the film and movie? Oh, the comparison between the film and the movie. Um, what we noticed was, um... The game followed the elements of the follows movie. Follows the elements of the movie, even down to the mother and daughter's names. The rooms of the house are same or similar to the movie, and details of the statues and specifics are almost uncanny between the movie and the film. Yeah, and um, that's where I think it gets weird, because, okay, so we've seen the movie, and you got to think where the uh, sculpture room is, there's that side door that um, Chloe used. To like bringing her thing before the sculpture room area went to hell, like everything just got smashed. Um, if you actually use that side door or whatever in the game, see this is where it gets. This is where the game and the movie are different. Like, if you use that quote unquote side door in the game, not only is it connected to the house, but you're not technically like outside. Like, you are, but you aren't, because the house is, like, in the game is forming, like, a, like a square with the, um, fountain in the middle. So of, it's like a courtyard. Yeah, like the courtyard. But anyway, that, that's mainly one of the not-so-similar things about the game in so, the game. So... Uh, the game in the game, wow. The game in the film. So back to the the comparisons between the movie and the game. Baba Yaga's appearance is also the same in the game as it is in the movie. They had they depicted her spot on the same way, like her color of her skin, her lengthy body form, like her face, everything. Her bony was still, fingers. Everything, everything was still the same between the movie and the game. Now, there were some differences between the movie and the game. For instance, in the game, you search for elements in physical form, such as a necklace, or a doll, or a crown, or a chalice, or something with stones in it to represent the five elements for this summoning circle. You, as you walk into the basement, a.k.a. the studio, in the movie, it appears as though is. Baba Yaga was summoned through a ritual in the game versus in the movie she was summoned by knocking on a door. Okay, yeah. See, this is this is 
why this is why I was saying I think this is like the continuation of the film. Yeah, this is why we were kind of thinking it's a continuation. But, like I said, I can't go into too much because we didn't even talk about the end of the film. But, trust me, it, there, you'll maybe understand why if you play the Don't Not Quite game. Mm-hmm. Because it does make sense with the way the film ended. Why the game would be the continuation of the film. Yes, because in the game, she was summoned by Ritual. In the movie, she was summoned by two knocks uh, by the goat head or ram door knocker. Um, one that one to wake her, one to summon her. And ugh, I can't even talk about it. Once really. you once you knock twice, Baba Yaga will not stop until she gets you, or or the curse is ended by, like we said, the one of three ways: killing Either, yourself. Yep. Um, Passing the curse on to someone else by making them do something truly evil. Yep. And then the third way was... Um, Baba Yaga gets who she set out to get. Yeah. They pretty much get what they what she was going after. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I think that's really it, right? That's pretty much all we really want to talk about. We don't want to give away the endings for either the game or the movie. We do not. We want to leave you we, guys we wanna, wondering. Yeah, we want to try doing this differently. Yeah. For those that haven't seen or played. Yeah, so we're we're kind of doing things a bit differently. Like Paul says, we're not going to necessarily give away certain things completely. We're going to leave some mystery to it so that you guys will want to see it for yourselves. And that way you guys can judge it yourself. Yeah. Paul but, and I already know what we think of it. But like I said, I would give it right now an 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, it was well done. Both. Yeah. And, and the the comparisons between the movie and the game were pretty... Phenomenal. Freaking cool. Yeah, I mean, the graphics alone were well uh, done with the game. Yeah, because I first watched you watched you play the game, and then we sat and we watched the movie last night, and I was sitting there, and I was just completely, completely beside myself, because I was like, holy shit, it's like, it's like, look, this is the same as this, and that's the same as that, and she looks the same as she did in the game, and it's like, holy freaking crap, right down to the names of the mother and the daughter, I was like, damn. Yeah, the one thing I just want to say real quick is the 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 game. I think is the continuation just because I believe it's fallen after the film. But in this case, I'm pretty sure. And I'm trying to figure out how to word this, but I wouldn't say the ritual circle thing. Is to summon, well, it is to summon her, but in this case, you, you've already been cursed. But I think in order to summon her door quicker, we'll just say, is by using that um, yeah. ritual. That's just all I'm going to say, but I just wanted to put it out there that I just don't think that's really you summoning her in the game. Alright, I'm going to say one more thing. In the game... You have the possibility of two endings. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but in the game, you have two possible endings. Paul has played through both, and I've seen the ramifications of what happens for both. Yes. But there are two endings to the game. Yep. Yeah, which I did mention there were multiple endings. Um, I didn't say what they were either, so once again, go by your play style. Otherwise, if you don't have time to play video games, look it up on YouTube. There's, I know there's going to be tons of walkthroughs already. Videos galore. So, just look up Don't Knock Twice the game, and you should find a walkthrough. That way you can see what I'm also talking about. Maybe if I can find a cool walkthrough or something, or maybe even down the road, I, I'll um, make a walkthrough of my own. But... Yeah, um, I think that's really it, right? Yeah, yeah, I think I think we've covered enough. We don't want to give everything away, like we said. All right. Well, 
So, with that being said, I was your host for this episode of Everything Horror for Don't Knock Twice. Um, pray she never answers if you do knock twice on that door. Just saying. That is right. <laughs> so, I am. I was your host, Tessa Baker. And I am your co-host tonight, Paul Dorsky. And, like... We always say here at Everything Horror, stay Stay scary. scary.